Hello, friends. This is Council Vice President Gabe Albornoz with another Cafecito in the Community, a series in which we have the opportunity to meet leaders in Montgomery County, learn a little bit more about them and their journeys, but also talk about the issues that they're tackling in their communities. We are so fortunate today to be joined by Mayor Bridget Newton, the mayor of the great city of Rockville. And I have a close personal connection to Rockville, not just having been born and raised here in Montgomery County, but as I recently shared at an event that the mayor and I were at together for 16 years now, Rockville has been my home away from home, having served as the director of the recreation department and traveling in most cases, multiple times per day to the council office building and the county executive's office building. Uh, and Rockville is such a beautiful city with such a wonderful tapestry of organizations, of cultures, of ethnicities. And it's such an appropriate place to be the focal point, the center of Montgomery County. And Mayor Newton, I wanna thank you personally. I've had the opportunity to see you in action through some extraordinarily difficult times the alliance between the city and the county, particularly through the pandemic, was very important to literally save lives. I've also greatly appreciated, Mayor Newton, the way you have embraced diversity, the flags of the international countries from around the world, and the myriad of events that you and your office have sponsored have been so important to all of us. And I appreciate your steady leadership through some difficult times, and most importantly, your partnership and alliance with the county. You are always accessible, and it's, we're, we're fortunate to have you in the position that you are in today. So Mayor Newton, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much, Council Vice President. Those are uh, very nice words and something for me to continue to work towards. So thank you. Absolutely. So Mayor Newton, tell us a little bit about you. I had a bio here that I was going to read, but I, I like hearing bios in the first person from people to talk about their journey in history. Tell us a little bit about the journey that brought you to the mayorship of the third largest city in the state of Maryland. Well, it's actually um, something I never, ever intended to do. I always uh, saw myself really behind the scenes, the research, the legislative aid, those kind of things. And I did work on the Hill back when I first graduated from college and moved to the area. One thing about Rockville that I want to tell you is I've lived in three different neighborhoods in the city. Um, I started out in an apartment at 1001 Rockville Pike. And then my husband, well, we weren't married then, but Fred and I got married and we uh, rented a townhouse on Azalea Drive. And in 1985, we bought our home and we have lived in the same home since 1985. And I, three different neighborhoods and three different housing types gives you a perspective that I think is very important for people to see. Um, you, if you've been here 16 years, uh, Council Vice President, you've seen how Rockville has changed. And it's been um, my honor and privilege to try to, help us go in a, in a good direction. I think we've made some real strides, but I grew up, born in uh, Connecticut, raised in the Midwest. I'm not a long time person, but I now realize I've been here since 81, so 40 years. It's a very, um, very long time, more than half my life. And I think what got me involved, uh, it's a funny story. I was watching a mayor and council meeting as the president, former president of the West End neighborhood. And I was frustrated by what the council at the time was doing. And I was yelling at the television and my daughter was like, who are you fighting with? And I realized I was yelling at the TV and that was a signal to me. If you care that passionately, get involved and try and make it better. And thus I ran for council, served four years, two terms on the council and in 13 was elected mayor. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a challenge and an opportunity and I relish the uh, good things that we've been able to do with the team we have here. I love that story. And I also read in your bio, you were actively engaged in the community, joining the, your school PTA, yeah. uh, volunteering for all sorts of commissions and, and different boards. If you could spend just a minute or two giving people advice who are interested in assuming top leadership positions within public office here locally. I, I was followed a similar track in getting engaged at the community level, but why is that important? And how did that help shape your interest in ultimately running for mayor, having served in so many of those different volunteer capacities? That's a really good question. And I think it's something um, for all of us to understand is that you are there as a representative of the community. It's not just about your own ideas, but you're, when you're an elected official, you're representing other people. 
and everybody, not just those you, who agree with you, but those who disagree with you and finding that common ground. And I think um, coming up through the PTA and the neighborhood and the committees and whatnot in Rockville gave me an opportunity to learn about Rockville. Not being from here, it's not about how I grew up in Ohio or you know, what experiences I've had as much as it's about understanding Rockville. And the diversity in the city of Rockville is exponentially more now than it was when I moved here. And my goal has always been to uh, learn about our different neighborhoods. We have nine very different um, areas in which um, people, you know, come from more neighborhoods now than nine. Uh, and I've got to get that new number. But, you know, our job, I think, is to bring the city, or in your case, the county together in working the best for everybody. And what's good for one isn't necessarily good for the other. And you have to find that common ground, that meeting point. Absolutely, and I think connected to that, and I've seen you again for many years now in action, you have a lot of relationships. You, you seem to have established a lot of trust with a diverse set of constituents over time. I, I would assume some of that based on some of the relationships you established when you did that volunteer work through those boards and commissions. Talk a little bit about how those relationships are important in building trust and coalitions. Well, you said it right there. It's knowing somebody. It's having that relationship that you've worked through other things together that people know when you say something, that's what it is. And I'm not, you know, there's a term out there, a carpet bagger or whatever. It's not somebody who just flew in to do something. You've been here, you've worked in the trenches and, and people know when I say something that that's the way it is. They also know that I'm very, um, what's the word? Not quick to change my mind, but if facts change, I'm willing to rethink my position. And a great example of that is the Confederate statue. I, as a history major in college, um, was thinking that we needed to add something to that monument to show the other side of that war. It's taken me, not, not now, I've, it took me a while. I shouldn't say it's taken me a while. It took me a while to see how that statue being there was such a negative mm -hmm. and was not something that needed to be retold, it needed to leave and then we could heal and maybe go forward. And so those are the kinds of things that I think elected leaders need to be comfortable to say, wow, I've got new information, I'm rethinking that and I made a mistake. That's something you don't hear very often is elected people admitting that they made a mistake. Amen, and boy, we could use a lot of that at the federal level, that's for yes. sure. Yeah. So you touched on um, just the, the evolution of Rockville, uh, which is such a beautiful city. And as, as you mentioned, a very diverse set of smaller communities within a larger city. Uh, full disclosure, my son played baseball through RBBA. So I had the opportunity to visit a number of the parks. And of course, in my old job, was intimately familiar with the great parks and recreation department that you have within the city. But that gave me an appreciation for Rockville is so much more than just the town center, which is right. where we get the most uh, attraction, attraction of people and, and just general support. Um, but talk a little bit about that evolution and why it presents an opportunity and in some ways the challenges as well um, for our community, because it's a microcosm of what's happening, not just in Montgomery County, but across our country. Right. And, you know, it's very interesting. Um, my son also played RBBA and some of his closest friends, probably all of his core of six, all played on that RBBA, the Diamondbacks team, many, many years ago. And what I'm loving is seeing that generation of mid 30s move back with their families. They've lived elsewhere. They've lived downtown D.C. and they want to come back because Rockville is a welcoming and safe place to, to raise a family. And, and that's my goal is it isn't all about the town center, but we do need a thriving town center. So one of the things that the council and I constantly talk about is how can we be both supportive of the town center, but also not leaving out those neighborhoods, neighborhood parks, neighborhood shopping centers. Um, so yeah, that's, it's a challenge. And you talk about the connection with the county and you all have been terrific and it is a great partnership but there needs to be more of that conversation. Yes. Um, and more people on your, on your council um, need to come into the municipalities and understand the challenges that we face, which is why I think um, you know, that tax dupe is such a big issue for us, is getting that money to keep our parks and all the services that we're able to provide. Well, I, t I couldn't agree more. One project I was working on getting off the ground that we had to put on pause because of the pandemic was I, I wanted, and I talked to my at-large colleagues about this, 
is to spend one or two or maybe even an entire week uh, with you all in City Hall, uh, just interacting with constituents, attending meetings, meeting with small local businesses in the first person. Because uh, as you would imagine, and I'm sure you are as well, we're all pulled in a million directions uh, yeah. because of everything that's happening. But creating a time and space for us to be able to focus on these issues, I think would be beneficial for all. So I'd, I'll follow up with you after this cafecito to see how we can get that off the ground. May even be easier now, now that we're so in a virtual environment uh, to be able to do something like that, but that connection is important. Be fantastic. Yeah, this pandemic has offered us some opportunities along with the challenges. And I think the way you all have pivoted, the way the city has tried to pivot, it's it's been good. I mean, yeah, there are wrinkles and things we can do better, but we've all learned a lot. Absolutely. And I don't think our public fully appreciates the challenges of your position. Uh, you have a police department uh, that, just like all police departments, is going through a evolution uh, based on, you know, generations of, of challenges that we're trying to address in real time. You've got a parks and recreation department, you have social services that you provide, and those critical functions that the city is responsible for operating, clearing snow, making sure trash is picked up on time, addressing uh, different permitting issues can be a struggle, can be a yeah. challenge. Um, talk to us a little bit, give us a glimpse of, of what, I know no day or even no hour is the same for you, um, but tell us a little bit about just um, if you can shed some light, what's on your plate right now? What are the things you're working on and addressing uh, this week and over the course of the rest of this calendar year, both challenges and opportunities to give the public a better sense of what it's like to be the mayor of such an important and large city? So, wow, that's a loaded question because it goes from the mundane yeah. of working towards the Monday night meeting and, you know, our, our meetings on Monday night run long yeah. last, last Monday night, not two nights ago, but the week prior went till midnight. Um, those are long, long nights. Um, so it goes from that, trying to make decisions as a group. And I, I believe strongly in compromise, but I also like when it's a five zero vote because mm -hmm. it shows that we've all given a little and gotten, you know, to something that everybody feels good about. So, that's my goal in those meetings. Um, and I am proud to say that they have become much more civil. There was a time in Rockville when our meetings were just chaotic and, and I've really worked hard at that. So it goes from that, trying to set the tone, trying to be that leader to the big picture. And I'm nothing if not an idea person. And so Stone Street has been on my mind since before I got elected to the council. Um, it is the spine of East Rockville and Lincoln Park, Lincoln Park being our African-American historic neighborhood. We've treated it terribly over the years. We've you know, allowed MCPS to just leave their trailers sitting there. We've not kept the road up that's on the city, not kept the sidewalk up. It's not a pleasant walk to the Metro and it should be. It's It's, prime real estate for families and businesses and whatnot. So that's really the big picture item I'm trying to, to pull together now is to get stakeholders in your um, council, stakeholders in MCPS, the city to come together and put mixed income housing, um, mixed use, you know, let's have some of the mom and pops that Rockville thrives on are small independent. Let's make it an arts and culture district or a brewery or whatever we want it to be. Let's, let's get that going. Um, and really give some life to kind of grow our city. The other one is preserving Redgate Park. Um, as you know, it used to be a public golf course that went away. Um, it's now an opportunity for us to make it something wonderful and save those 140 acres of just green space and trees and animals, put something there that really brings together. I'd love to see an amphitheater, small, not big like Wolf Trap, but small, we, we've lost, and this is good, we've lost our parking lots where we used to hold hometown holidays, um, thanks to Mayor Duncan, who brought that great thing to the city. But now with more people living downtown, you know, noise going to 11 or 12 is not what they want either. So we have to walk that line and the park would give us an opportunity to go back to a hometown holiday event. So those are the big things that I'm thinking about, um, all the while keeping the train running on time you know, and making sure our police have the support that they need, the, um, the training that they need and deserve. Um, and also, you know, Parks and Rec. And I will say, I believe in my, in my heart that the group that pivoted the best and the quickest in the city was our senior staff. Mm -hmm. um, they 
provided meals, they provided rides, they did so much. Um, and then you all helped with, with the vaccinations. So. Absolutely. Those are exciting projects. I particularly want to follow up with you on the amphitheater because I think that could present some real unique opportunities for us. We're still uh, my, my, among my many long-term goals that I'd like to achieve while in office, uh, we do need an arena in Montgomery County to be able to house our graduations and uh, you know, the, the sort of something like the, the George Mason Patriot Center, which is just the right size and scope uh, for our community to be able to carry out special events. So a lot there that I definitely wanna follow up with you on. So I wanna close with this as, as we're wrapping up. The intersection between our municipality and the county is so important. Uh, we, we are one in the same, and we've touched on that at various elements, but if we could focus on that for the last couple minutes we have left, why is the relationship between the county and our municipalities so important? And how, from your perspective, do you think we could strengthen that relationship? So, you know, one thing that keeps being um, passed over, whatever, is Rockville's the county seat. Yes, we are. We are the home of the county government, which gives us, uh, you know, a real seat at the table, so to speak, but also is a reason that we like to keep Rockville's downtown thriving because it supports the county government and vice versa. Um, you know, the municipalities in Montgomery County, um, I, I should know the number off the top of my head. It's about a million and three quarters in the state. People live in municipalities. I don't know the number in Montgomery County, but people don't really um, know the difference. If you don't live in a municipality, you don't really know the difference from whether you live in a county or municipality. If you live in a municipality, you do know because you pay an extra tax that provides for an extra level of services, you know, as we do in the city of Rockville. It is important that the county recognizes that and that we as a municipality help you all see what we're doing, not across purposes with you at all, but in taking um, some of your responsibility away. So for instance, we have our own police department, which we respond to 73% of the calls for service in the city of Rockville, thus allowing county police to be elsewhere. And so, you know, and our calls for service are generally, um, we don't have a lot of crime, let's be honest. Rockville is a wonderful, safe place, but there's still accidents that happen or there's the break-in or yesterday we had a situation on Nelson. Those are the kinds of things that we allow you all at the county level to, to go and do in, in the greater county. So it, it's a partnership. It's, a, it's something that I think we all, and I like your idea of coming into the cities and towns and understanding what goes on because that's how you, you really know when we come to the table and say, we really need to be compensated for what we're doing here, you have firsthand knowledge of why we're asking. Absolutely. Well, Mayor Newton, uh, the time went fast. I could talk to you all day, but this has been so wonderful. And I should say, Rockville is also home to my favorite uh, pizza in the entire county, Giuseppe's, which oh, is fantastic uh, and, and a go-to and a staple. Uh, and, yeah. and my kids now enjoy too. But thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you for spending the time with us today and look forward to continuing our important work together. I do as well. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So that's it for our cafecito in the community today. There will be another one coming up soon. Uh, check out our Facebook page and social media accounts to see what's on the horizon. Thanks so much everybody for joining us. Have a great day, everyone. 